Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings where we are currently chilling at 98.3% threat. And that is a slight problem to our continued expansion. That said, our vassals are pushing the borders for us, so that's nice. I mean, in theory. Yemen is fighting for Sana, but they are refusing to actually occupy that. Now, I would like to make this into a proper duchy over here. We can't do that yet until Arabia is no longer at war. So that's going to be exciting. However, we do have some money, and we should probably look at spending that. Um, we're not going to spend it on this, though. We're just going to put our faith in God. Fantastic. Faith in God is nice and cheap. Okay, all of this is looking pretty decent so far. Yeha still has some upgrades to do, but that's okay. So we are going to go ahead and work on our hospitals, I think. A non-aggression pact with the Farron of Wagadu. I actually... Dude is Miaphysite. Sure, you're just going to get annexed by the Spirit Guardians or Mali anyway. We'll go for it. Okay, as I was saying, we need to continue constructing in our hospitals, so we're just going to build a chapel over here real quick. That'll be fine. Excellent. And we have just had some explosive growth this last little while, haven't we? That is kind of insane, actually. I'm okay with it. Did we ever actually end up joining the community of St. Anthony? No, I intended to do that on this guy, but I forgot to join it. We are four years late on that. We're in. Okay, how much devotion are we making per month? Five. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. It's always so slow at the beginning of each life. How you doing, Byzantines? Hmm. This is the current dynastic heir. Of course, it's Agnatic Cognat Cognatic Imperial Elective. So even if we were able to, by some miracle, matrilineally marry this guy... Who's our heir, even? Our heir is currently our brother. Okay. I think our best bet is to try to inherit bits out of the Byzantine Empire rather than the Byzantine Empire wholesale. So, like, for example, if we were to inherit Lombardy over here, that is currently held by this guy, and this guy would potentially, potentially, be a decent choice. He's on Agnatic Cognatic Primogeniture. Now, of course, we can't matrilineally marry anyone. We should probably be looking through this guy's vassals for reasonably young single women. Like her. She's not single. Fair enough. Uh, let's see. Ideally, actually, would be... Underage women still. That would be ideal. There, There's this guy. That's not going to work for our purposes right now, of course. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's anything right now. But I think our overall goal is definitely going to be to inherit some some segment of the Byzantine Empire and start carving them up that way. And the best way to do that would probably be betrothals when children are still quite young. So like when they're like three or four would be when we'd want to set up the betrothal probably for optimum chance of it actually happening. That said, we're not in a great position right now, although our brother should probably get married to someone. This Duchess of Burgundy is an interesting option. We're gonna go for it. What does she actually hold? 
Oh, wow. That's actually an amazing option. I'm very happy with that. I didn't even look. <laughs> that is incredible. Okay, so if we can continue inheriting Europe, that would be perfect. Now, I don't know for for a fact that uh, we will inherit this, but it, it's a possibility down the line. We did get a chapel built, so that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, we can't afford anything over here, unfortunately, nor here. We can afford a translation house here, and we absolutely should do that. Excellent. Our military advances are so much behind our economic and culture advances. What is going on there? Learning plus martial. Learning plus stewardship. Okay, so that's 0.3 differential. From buildings, 1.36. It's mostly from buildings. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let's grab this point in cities and temples. And I also think we should grab this point of tolerance. That allows us to get notable status of women. Which isn't super important right now. Two people would support this currently. It's not super important right now. I think we will hold off on passing that law until we actually have a female heir at some point in the future. Which, of course, we currently do not. Interesting. Dilla is incapable. Why are you incapable? I don't know why she's incapable. She just is. Okay. Whatever. I mean, we are on Gruminaire family focus. Our wife is off leading troops, which is slightly awkward. Slightly awkward indeed. Okay, well, our wife controls these provinces, so we're going to get... Oh, and this over here as well. We're going to get some bits of Germany. Oh, I didn't notice this before. Apparently, West Francia is suzerained to the Byzantine Empire. Hello, Byzantine Revolt. Does this open up any options for us? With this current level of threat, I doubt it. Yeah, we'll switch to Theology Focus just as soon as we have an heir. I, I really doubt we can do anything here. Let's look at relative troop counts. 37.86 versus... 99.47. We don't really have any claims. This would be on the Byzantine Revolt here. I mean, the Byzantine Revolt is going to win that, right? But the Spirit Guardians are pushing up over here, which is actually good for us. Anybody carving into the Byzantine Empire is very good for us. But we need to be looking for ways to do that ourselves as well. They're kind of the final boss here, and really the only empire that is really stronger than us right now. So that's something we're definitely going to have to look at. Unless maybe, like, Tibet? With Chinese support? They're not really that strong. One of these Indian empires, maybe? That's not who I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at this guy. 20k. Yeah, that's not too strong either. So it's pretty much just the Byzantines that we need to worry about right now. And I definitely want to see them broken up. What are they revolting over, anyway? Phyllis's claim on the Byzantine Empire. So she is claiming the whole empire.
The Byzantine revolt is on agnatic cognatic primogeniture. I don't think the revolt succeeding would change this from imperial elective. We can keep an eye on that, though. If it does, that would be a very, very good thing for us. We could potentially insert ourselves into the uh, line of succession there. That would be a very good thing indeed. Let's see, we should probably go for a translation house over here. Excellent. Arabia is still at war. Oh, they actually managed to occupy Sana. 79% in favor of Yemen. That's a good thing for us. We do want Yemen to do this, so... Yeah, win that fight, Yemen. It's looking good. Excellent. So that puts Yemen at... 83%. Hello! Egypt is now de jure part of the Empire of Abyssinia. Excellent. <laughs> Good old de jure drift. Sometime I should try playing with de jure drift off, though. I kind of don't like it. I don't know. De jure drift is kind of a weird thing. I like to keep the de jure borders as much as possible. So, de jure drift off would be interesting. It would definitely make expansion in situations like this harder, because now, all of a sudden, I do get an opinion bonus because... Or, rather, I don't get a, an opinion malice, because I'm his de jure leash now. Which is excellent. So, this war should be over soon. 93%. Fantastic. The Arabian Revolt is still going on, though. And there it goes. Excellent. We can now create the title Duchy of Hejaz, because no one holds it. The guy who held Sana is now unlanded. That's perfect. Okay, so what do we need here for the Duchy Capital? It goes to Mecca. So this guy. Grant landed title. Duchy of Hejaz. That, that is de jure part of the Kingdom of Arabia, which we do not hold. But that does put us under our vassal limit, which is ideal. Makurian claim on Yemen. Okay, I mean, he's not going to win that. 16k versus 9k. Have fun, buddy. <laughs> That's not going to go well for you. Excellent. More distrust being sown in the Byzantine Empire. That is exactly what we like to see right now. For retinues, we could actually expand our retinues. And I think we'll grab a cavalry retinue and a shock retinue. That puts us up to almost 10k in our retinue. That is fantastic. Very, very happy to see that. At this point, we're mostly just shopping around for opportunities. I mean, our threat is so high that we can't really declare on anybody effectively, because, like, say we wanted to fight Songhai over here again, and uh, looks like Houseland is still going after this and losing yet again. As expected, but if we were to Holy War for Gurma over here, look at this. That is just unacceptable. So we're not going to do that just yet. That'll be something to do a little bit later on down the road. Because we are threatening. Very, very threatening. Luckily, we are going to be able to allow our vassals to do some pushing for a while. And we will continue to grow. I mean, just passively at this point. And the cat is just screaming outside at the door all of a sudden. Okay, well, 
we're kind of just waiting anyway. So I'm just going to zoom out here so we can see the world a little bit better. We can't quite see all of it, but that's pretty close. And I'm going to go let her in and hope that it doesn't pause from an event. I will be right back. So, that's an event. Holy War for Arabia. Are they specifically only claiming this over here? Or is this on the whole kingdom of Arabia? I don't know, but uh, the king of Egypt is going after Arabia, and he's becoming too powerful. We are going to have to do something about this. We're going to start swaying him. We cannot join his war. Okay, the Duchess of Burgundy wants to get married to our brother, which we set that up previously. Go for it. Now, this is a regular marriage. So I believe we will end up getting this, even if we have a separate heir of our own. Just how much of Arabia is this guy going to end up getting? That's the real question here. Because the king of Egypt is definitely becoming too powerful. I would like to carve him back down to his de jure borders. For that to happen, we'd have to imprison him. What is our current... I'm, I'm not going to go through with this. What is our current chance? 1%. Okay. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to go through with it. I just wanted to look at the odds. It's definitely an interesting option. But it is slightly tyrannical. So uh, we would need to provoke him. Which is something we might do with our next life. I want to get opinion with him. Well, actually. How many troops does he have? 33k? Okay, we, we would be roughly even taking his troops out of that equation. Even though we don't get all of his troops, so we'd still be a little bit stronger. We might want to go ahead and switch this straight over to antagonization. Because if we can antagonize this guy... Become friends with this... this guy. I... sure. Why not? <laughs> Whatever. If we can antagonize this guy into doing something. We'd have to fire him from our council. He just lost a big battle. He declared this war on Arabia. Okay, so if we were to... Revoke his title of... Or rather, we'd have to transfer the vassal. Retract the vassalage of the Duke of this guy. Yeah, he would not do it because of his current power levels. His heir is only 10... That might be an interesting option. Wow, a skill 30 patriarch. Would you look at that? That's insane. Go for it. 15% annually for converting Sunni. That is nuts. Okay. 
So we are definitely going to... Who can we imprison? Duke Hakim. Fine. Okay, so as I was saying, we do need to spend some money here, and so we shall. 2588, that is a lot of money. Pilgrims in, sure. I mean, it's not great, but it'll do. So yeah, we need to do two real things going forward here. And that is, we need to break up Egypt a little bit. I want Egypt to no longer be provincial, essentially. I don't want it to have a border with the Byzantines or with Arabia. So essentially, I want Egypt to be an internal kingdom at this point. The other thing that we need to do is be working on breaking up the Byzantines. Those are our two primary threat points at this juncture, and to that end, we need to figure out a plan of attack for both. Okay, the Arabian Revolt just ended. I kind of hope... Okay. So this was... This is Muhalabid again. Oh, because he took Arabia. Right. Okay, so the king of Egypt holds this right now, which is definitely more than he should. Now, there's absolutely no way he would accept this. We could revoke the whole thing, in theory. But I think a better option might be to have this revert to us. What's the line of succession look like? It's on, oh, that's right. We did force Gavelkind on him. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so we then hope that he gets another heir here. He's currently on Agnatic Gavelkind, and he only has one male heir. We can create this title, Duchy of Arabia, and he was going for just the duchy. We're going to let him create that. He can spend his money on that one. How old is he? He's 37, and his wife is 33. There's still a chance that he might have additional children. But even if he doesn't, this guy might, and that might cause it to break up. We're going to stop antagonizing him. I don't think that's necessary anymore. Ooh, excellent. We just got some tech points. We can't spend them on anything, though. Unfortunately. And also, unfortunately, we have not had any children yet. Ah, uh, her sister. Yeah, we definitely need to have a child if we want to inherit these counties. Oh, there's two up here as well. Yep, that'll have to be a thing. We'll just have to wait and see how all this plays out, I think. And to that end... It is pretty much time to put a cut in here. I know not a... Oh, that's actually perfect. Our wife is now pregnant. I know not a whole lot has happened in this episode, so I do want to do one last thing before we actually have this happen. I want to buy a favor from this guy, 236. He would not do it. What about this guy? 80. Yes. Fantastic. That gets three on our side. This duchess will vote for, for us. The king of Jerusalem would probably be very expensive to bribe. Yes, indeed. These two are... I, I think we should actually replace our chancellor if we've got somebody better. Yes. She would probably vote for status of women because she is herself a woman. And that gets a malcontent off of our council. And she's one skill better diplomacy. I like it. So if we were to pass this... We have three supporters, four opposers. That's awkward. That means that we definitely need one more person to vote for this. 
We're going to do a council consideration on this. This guy is... We're going to call in his council support. And at this point, we can pass this. So we'll put it through. I don't know if our child is going to be a male or female yet, but we'll see. We'll get our notable status of women. There we go. Fantastic. That does, in fact, mean that all career paths are open for prominent women. So that is good. We could become lustful. I mean, that's not a great thing for the community of St. Anthony, so... We might become chaste, which wouldn't be great. We did not. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, we are going to continue plotting the downfall of the Byzantine Empire. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>